Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Pension Awareness Month. My name is Catherine Murray. I am the Training and Engagement Manager from ICSP. I'm joined today by two of my training team colleagues, Liliana Gonzalez and Michelle Storer. We're here to guide you through the journey to understand your pension better and prepare the road ahead for retirement. The session today focuses, focuses on why it's important to get to grips with your pension nice and early. We look at how your alpha pension benefits are calculated and how that uh, compares with other pension provision out there as well. We are recording today's session, so if there are some important points that you'd like to look at again, it will be available online on the scheme website from around lunchtime tomorrow. So you will be able to refer back to it or if you want to recommend it to some friends or colleagues, then you're able to do that as well as it will be on available online very soon. We are taking your questions today, so the later part of today's session is a question and answer. So if you've got any burning questions for us, then please do enter them into the Q&A function on the team session and we'll take your questions from there. And if you do see a question that you'd like the answer to, then do upvote that. We will focus and focus on answering the most upvoted questions in today's session. OK, so we'll get today's session underway. I'm going to start off by handing you across to Liliana, who's going to talk you through some of the basics of the Alpha scheme. Over to you, Lil. Thanks, Catherine. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming to today's session. This is the Pension 101 workshop. So today we're going to talk about Alpha. We're going to talk about all its benefits and yeah, give you the information you need to start your pension planning. And um, so again, we're going to talk about why it pays to talk about your pension early. Think about your pension early. We're going to talk about the myths and facts about Alpha as well. There are some common misconceptions, so we're going to go over those facts so you can start planning your pension. We'll also talk about the other benefits of being in the scheme because it does go beyond your pension as well. We'll also talk about what you need to know after joining the pension scheme, and we're going to talk about the differences between defined benefit and defined contribution pensions. So why think about your pension now? Because of course you want to know what you're paying for. A lot of our members know they're paying towards a pension scheme, but don't necessarily know exactly what those contributions entail. So you want to know where that money is going and how it's going to work for you and your financial future. You want to, of course, know what benefits you have, because of course your civil service pension is going to be a very important part of your retirement when that time comes. So you want to understand the benefits that you have. And of course it goes just beyond your pension, of course, civil service does provide you an income at retirement, but there's other benefits to being a member of the scheme as well. So it's really good to know exactly what your money's getting you that you're contributing every month. Thinking early, of course, it gives you more time to plan for your financial future. So the earlier you engage with your pension, that's going to give you the opportunity to perhaps buy added pension or make additional contributions towards a DC scheme. So of course, the earlier you get involved, um, you know, the the harder it's going to sorry, the easier it's going to be on your wallet rather than harder. Because of course, if you wait when you get towards retirement, you know, it's going to be a bit more of a rush to try to get those benefits that you're looking for. So again, knowing what you need at retirement and having a plan to get there is going to set you up really nice for when you do decide to leave. You want to know your options, so you want to make the right choices for yourself. You might make different choices as you know things change, you know life events can impact pensions and things like that. So you want to know what options you have in terms of your pension. Like I said, you do have things like added pension, you've got additional voluntary contributions, so you have things there um, uh, to boost your benefits if you want. And again, knowing what your options are and the differences between them is very key. And planning early may allow you to retire early, so some people are really keen to go um, early and of course the earlier you plan, the better it's going to be when you want to get to that point of leaving early. So uh, thinking about your pension now, of course, is the best way. So what you need to know upon joining the civil service pension. So firstly, you are automatically enrolled into Alpha. Now you do have the opportunity to go into what's called partnership, which is a defined contribution arrangement. And we're going to talk about the differences between defined benefit, which what Alpha is, and defined contribution, which is what partnership is. So those are the two types of pensions in the market, uh, but civil service policy puts you in Alpha upon joining. Of course, you've got the opportunity to change if you would like to. You'll let us know on the pension choices form. So your pension choices form lets us know what choice you've made, whether it be Alpha 
or partnership. And it's really, really key to, to fill in that pension choices form because there's things like transferring in that you want to let us know as soon as possible because there is a time limit. So um, one of the things to bear in mind is that it's 12 months from joining the civil service to transfer in any previous benefits you have, whether it be in the public or private sector, you do have the opportunity in your first 12 months of joining to make uh, those transfers and bring them into the alpha pension scheme if you wish. You'll also let us know of your death benefit nomination. So um, if you were to pass away, there would be a lump sum and potential pensions paid to your dependents, uh, but your death benefit nomination form is for any lump sum payable. So bearing that in mind, if you were to pass away, there would usually be a lump sum paid out to who you've nominated. So really important that you let us know and keep us up to date with your nomination because we do act in accordance with your wishes. As I mentioned before, boosting your pension is an option as long as you're an active member of the service. You can do things like added pension. There's something called EPA, as well as additional voluntary contributions. So there's three options you have to make those additional contributions, and you can let us know upon joining if you wish to start that you know, straight away. And again, if you don't want to be an alpha for whatever reason, you do have the opportunity to switch into partnership. So again, you can let us know as soon as you've got your pension choices form what you want to do in terms of your pension. you are auto enrolled into alpha so we wanted to give you all of the facts and figures about alpha just so you know exactly how it works and what benefits it entails as well so firstly as i mentioned alpha is a defined benefit pension scheme and what that means is kind of what it sounds like your benefits are defined in advance so what you get from the alpha pension scheme is actually based on calculations and formulas rather than investment performance which is what the majority of pensions in the market are made up of but defined benefit pensions are pretty rare nowadays they're usually found in the private sector and it gives you a set calculation so you can kind of anticipate there or thereabouts what you can get at retirement now alpha is career average and what that means is that there's a set calculation for each individual year of your civil service that will build up your pension for your retirement. Now that pension is actually linked to inflation. So that is meaning your alpha pension will retain its value over time. So every April there will be a cost of living adjustment that applies to your pension uh, for that inflation. Now your employer contributes at least 26.6% of your pay towards your pension every year, and that's to make sure there's enough money in the pot to pay your benefits when that time comes. And tax relief, so tax relief is immediate. So if you're putting towards your alpha pension, you're getting immediate tax relief because your pension contributions are deducted first from your gross pay and then deductions do come thereafter. So you are getting full tax relief. Now again, Alpha does provide you an income at retirement, which is an absolute benefit, but there are other benefits to being a member as well. So things like ill health retirement. So as long as you've been a civil servant for at least two years and your health has taken a turn where you're unable to do your current role, you can apply through your employer for ill health retirement. So that gives you that peace of mind that should your health take a turn, you can apply for this option. Now, um, there is a, a process that one must follow. So the scheme medical advisor makes the assessment. Uh, but again, if you do find yourself in the position that you need to explore that option due to your health, speak with your employer in the first instance and they would guide you through that process. The death benefit lump sum, as I said before, you do have the uh, lump sum there. If anything were to happen to you, there would be that lump sum paid to whoever you've nominated for that. Um, and that's usually two times your pay while you're in service. Uh, dependent pensions are a separate benefit. So if you were to pass away, there would be a potential pension paid out to a spouse, partner, civil partner, or any dependent children. So there are some eligibility criteria that they have to meet, but generally speaking, we will provide that pension if anything were to happen to you. Now you are able to nominate an unmarried partner for that pension. There is a form on the civil service pension website where you can nominate them. Uh, but it's not necessarily not necessarily a legal requirement. It's something you can do to make sure that we understand and know who your partner is. Um, 
but there we go. So in terms of the contributions that your employer makes, again, it's between 26.6 and 30.3%. So on the right hand side, you can see the nominal value of those contributions that they make towards your pension. So as you can see, your employer does pay on average about six times more contributions than you, again, to make sure there's enough money in the pot to pay your pension when that time comes. Your contributions are between 4.6 and 8.05%, again, based on your pensionable earnings for each year. Um, so again, on the right hand side is the nominal value of what you would pay up to towards your pension. But again, those contributions guarantee you all of those benefits we've just spoken about. So again, defined benefit pensions, the contributions don't directly correlate to your level of benefits because there are specific calculations that dictate your benefits where the contributions again are making sure there's enough money in the pot to pay your benefits when the time comes. So the way alpha accrues, you're going to again bank a set percentage of your pay for each individual year of service. So everybody starts in alpha in year one, no matter what. So our scheme year for alpha runs from the 1st of April to the 31st of March every year. So in that year, your employer will tell us in a single figure what you've earned that's pensionable. And pensionable earnings are usually inclusive of your salary and any pensionable allowances. So again, we take your single figure of earnings for each year and we multiply it by the accrual rate, which is 2.32% for alpha for each year of service. Then at the 31st of March every year, we calculate what you have so far and we carry it forward to the next year because on the 1st of April, the cost of living adjustment applies to your alpha pension based on the pension you've accrued so far. So that cost of living adjustment could be negative or positive. So it's depending on how inflation is performing at that point. Um, of course, at the moment, inflation is at a high. That's why there was a 10.1% increase on the 1st of April to alpha pensions. So again, every 1st of April, the cost of living adjustment applies to your pension to make sure that it retains its value over time. And again, 2.32% of your earnings are banked for each year of service. So it's based on your each individual year. So again, you're building up your annual alpha pension for each year of service. And again, everything you've banked so far is carried forward. So you're building up your annual pension every year of service. So it will grow. Um, if you do choose to be in the alpha scheme, you will get what's called a benefit statement every year. So you will be able to see every single year how your pension grows as your civil service career progresses. But we have an example here of how the pension works in terms of the accrual. Again, everybody starts in year one no matter what. So in this member's first year, they earned £23,000. So 2.32% of that means this member has banked £533.60 of pension toward their retirement in year one. So the balance at the 31st of March is £533.60. So we carry that forward and the next day on the 1st of April, the cost of living adjustment applies to that balance. So in this example, the cost of living was 3.1%, the inflation factor 3.1%, which means this member's bank to further 16 pounds and 54 pence toward their pension. Now in the member's second year, they earned a little bit more at 24,000 pounds. So 2.32% of that is another 566 pounds and 80 pence. So now the member has the £533.60 they've accrued in their first year, plus the £16.54 for the cost of living, and in their second year that £556.80 accrued for that year, so the total pension is now £1,106.94. So again, we would carry that forward and the cost of living or inflation would apply to that. So £1,106.94 pence had a 5.1% increase in their third year. So £1,106.94, 5.1% of that is another £56.45 pence banked towards the pension. And in year three, the member's pay was £25,000. 2.32% of that means they've banked another £580 toward their pension. So they have the £1,106.94 from year two, plus the 56.45 for the inflation, and now they've added another £580 in their third year. So now their total pension is 
and 39 pence. So again, we're going to carry that forward. And on the 1st of April this year, there was a 10.1% increase on that pension. So 1,743.39, 10.1% of that is another 176 pounds and eight pence banked towards the pension. And in year four, the member earned 26,000 pounds. 2.32% of that is another 603 pounds and 20 pence. So at the end of this year, in this example, the member has again the 1,743.39 carried forward from their third year. They have the 10.1% increase of 176.80, and now they've accrued a further 603.20. So at the end of their fourth year, their annual pension is now 2,522 pounds and 67 pence. And again, that amount would be paid for every year if this member, for example, was to retire today and they're of age to take that, that would be their annual pension for the rest of their life. Now, retirement from Alpha is payable at your normal pension age, which is state pension age. So the state pension age runs from 65 to 68. Um, if you're not entirely sure what your state pension age is, you can check on the .gov.uk website. It asks you for your birthday and it will let you know what your state pension age is, and that would be your Alpha pension age as well. So you're able to take your Alpha at state pension age with no reduction. However, you can claim your pension early if you wish on a, a reduced basis because if you take your pension early chances are it's probably going to be paid for a longer period of time which means the reduction kind of takes into account for that now when you do choose to retire from alpha you will have the option to convert some of your pension in exchange for a lump sum as well so there is a tax-free lump sum option. Um, now again, on your benefit statements every year, if you choose alpha, it will let you know what your um, maximum cash would be. So defined benefit pensions are not able to be kind of taken out in cash in full, but there's the option to take up to the maximum amount available from the scheme and it would be tax free. So again, in terms of the lump sum, 25% of the total value of your pension is what it is. It's an HMRC limit for all pension schemes that members are usually able to take up to 25% of the pot as a lump sum, and that again would be tax-free. Now, defined benefit pensions, and um, we do have that calculation that gives you your maximum cash option, and it's your annual pension multiplied by 30 divided by seven. So that's the 25% equivalent for the civil service pensions to give you that 25% as it is. So based on that pension of £2,522.67, multiplying that by 30 and dividing it by seven, that member would have a maximum cash option of £10,811.44. Now, it's up to you whether or not you want to take any lump sum. You can take any amount you wish. You don't have to take any at all. If you don't want to, you can take any amount up to the maximum cash available. So whatever lump sum you want to take, you would have to give up one pound of pension per 12 pounds of the cash taken. So for example, this member wants to take the full 10,811 pounds and 44 pence. So we divide that by 12 which means this member um, has to give up that pension and they're left with um, that 1,621 pounds and 72 pence. So again, the reduction, if you do want to take any cash, would be permanent to your pension. So again, there's not really a one size fits all approach to pensions. It's what works best for yourself. Then just to recap what you get for your contributions, uh, the member makes contributions of at least 4.6%, which equates to 4,508 pounds of contributions over the four years. So this member's pension in retirement is five, sorry, 2,522 pounds and 67 pence a year, which means in less than two years, the member will recoup all the contributions that they've made towards the pension. The rest of the retirement is financed by your employer's contributions. And again, alternatively, the tax free lump sum could be claimed at retirement. And again, that pension would reduce to 1,621.72. So again, all of those are assumptions are based on the fact of the member taking it at state pension age, which means the pension's not reduced. So again, that's just to illustrate again that the contributions you make go toward your pension when the time comes and then any extra cash again is fronted by your employer. 
So I hope that's been helpful in giving you the information about Alpha. So I'll hand it back to Catherine. Thanks, Lil. That was great. That was really interesting to see how Alpha is calculated. And I think particularly interesting um, to see that how quickly members recoup those contributions that they've paid during their employment. There were a few questions in the chat there saying things like, I'm getting 2.32% back, but I'm paying 4.6%. How does this work? I think it's easier to almost not look at it as a percentage and maybe think of it as a monetary value. So look at how much you're paying in every year and then how much pension you're getting back. But the key thing to bear in mind, of course, is you're going to receive that pension every single year in retirement. So you're not just really paying for it once, but you're going to get that pension back every single year in retirement. And you can see from that example that you do get your money back really quickly in retirement. So it is a really generous scheme financed by those generous employer contributions. So there is lots of information available on the Civil Service Pension Scheme website. We have the dedicated Pension Awareness Month pages that will give you lots more information around the sessions that are running throughout the month. And if you're keen to know more, then we also have our Pension Power webinars that we run every single weekday. You can sign up to attend one of those via the Civil Service Pension Scheme website at any time. And we run those sessions in quite small groups of around 30 to 40 people. So if you have got a lot of questions, there's lots of opportunity to ask questions there. So they're really good and valuable if you want to find out more and have got lots of burning questions for us. OK, so continuing on with the session, um, I'm going to hand you now over to Michelle, who's going to explain some more of the benefits of Alpha and also how it compares to other schemes out there. So over to you, Michelle. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So we're just going to build exactly on what Liliana has been through and based on all the questions that have come through, I think you're going to get a lot of answers to those that have come through so far. So to understand how Alpha works for you, to understand your benefits, we have the pension portal available for you. So it's a really key tool to use. It's important that you know it's there for you. It's important to access that so you can see your annual statements and also you can access the retirement model. So we get a lot of questions from people saying, how do I know what my pension benefits look like? How do I know how they're building up? And that's what the pension portal is for. So when you sign into the portal, so you need your national insurance number, your date of birth and your employer, and you'll see a number of tiles when you sign in there. And one of them is a retirement modeler. This pulls information through from your annual benefit statement. It will allow you to play around with what your options are when it comes to retirement. So you can move the slide in scale to see what my different options at different ages and also to see lump sum options. Now, just to point out, it's all based on your current civil service employment and Alpha will automatically show you a lump sum of zero. But as Liliana mentioned before, it is an option that you do have on retirement. So to see what your lump sum options are for Alpha, just remember to move that slide in scale. Now, of course, not everybody's going to be in the civil service right up until retirement age. So looking at what your options are if you were to leave before that age kicks in. So in order to qualify for a pension from the civil service and the majority of pension arrangements out there, you need to have done two years qualifying service. So that's not impacted by part time hours or any periods of unpaid leave. So if you were literally leaving tomorrow, we would just need to make sure that you're in before the 18th of September 2021. You will have what's called a preserved or a deferred pension, so it means it's not building up any more affected by your salary as you're no longer in the civil service earning one, but it will go up by inflation each year. We need to make sure it's not losing any of its value. You'll then be able to use the pension portal to view that information, so you'll be able to say, OK, I've left now, but how is inflation affecting my pension? So you'll still be able to use that to see how your pension is building up. You can look into transferring your pension benefits to other arrangements. So if you go and work elsewhere, there is the possibility of you taking your pension with you. Now, because you're in the public sector, there are restrictions around where it can be transferred to, but you can certainly have a look into that at that time. And what that will mean is that when you get the pension quotation, the transfer quotation from us, they'll tell you what it'll buy in their arrangement and you can then decide if it's best for you to remain in the civil service pension scheme increasing by inflation or to transfer it to your new employer. 
If you do leave the civil service with less than two years, then you will be given the option of having a refund of your own contributions. There will be tax deductions made from that. And if you do have that option, then that means you'll have no benefits left in the civil service. Or again, you can look into transferring them elsewhere. Now, Liliana mentioned and touched on this a little bit earlier on. Well, understanding your death benefits, what would be payable and if there's any action that you need to take now. So seeing some of the questions that were coming through while Liliana was going through some of that, because it's probably going to be answered here. So whilst you are in the scheme earning a salary, so what we would class as an active individual, should anything happen to you, there would be a tax free lump sum paid of two times your pensionable earnings. So that would go to whoever you have on the nomination form. So it's really important that you keep it up to date when you go through any changes in relationships, in your circumstances, and that can be done through the portal. And you can also access the form from the forms area of the Civil Service Pension Scheme website. If you leave the civil service but haven't yet retired, there will still be a tax free lump sum payment, but that would be five times the pension that you've built up. So that would still go as a tax free lump sum to whoever you've had on that form. So even once you've left the civil service and right up until retirement, it's important that you have a look at that form and make sure that it's updated. In addition to that, and not linked to who you have on the nomination form, there is a potential adults dependent pension. So looking at Alpha, that's 37.5% of your pension that you've built up that would be paid to your spouse, civil partner, or a cohabiting long-term partner. And as I said, that will be paid for the rest of their life. Now, if you're married or in a civil partnership, it's an automatic payment. So we'd be liaising with them and of course, put that into payment. Now, if you have a long-term partner, so the definition of that is that you're cohabiting, so you're sharing the financial winnings of the home, then they can receive the equivalent. So that's 37.5% of your pension. There is no mandatory form to fill in, but we would recommend for that that you filled in the partner declaration form that can be accessed from the website. That just makes the whole process a little bit easier on that person that would already be going through an awful time. If you fill that form in and let us know about them, then we can liaise with them to get that pension paid to them. And in addition to that, the scheme also provides a potential child's dependent pension. So that can be paid of up to 50% of your pension to any child that's financially dependent on you at the time that something happens. Now, the qualifying criteria for that is that the children need to be under the age of 23 and in full time education. It will stop once they've reached age 23 or left full time education, whichever happens first. So it's intended to be paid to help them through their education until they're able to provide for themselves. Now looking on to the different types of pension schemes, so Liliana mentioned before, so we have defined benefit scheme, which is your alpha scheme, but you do also have the option of leaving alpha and joining partnership. And I can see from some of the questions, we do have people in that scheme. So they operate very differently and a defined contribution scheme is generally what you would find the majority of the private sector offer. But we're going to have a look at the differences and we're not saying that one's better than the other, but it's to help you understand how they both work. So for a defined benefit scheme, you'll find them most commonly in the public sector. So they did exist in the private sector, but a lot of the employers and the schemes closed those schemes down because they were quite expensive to run. They're generally based on your final salary when you come to leave or retire or a career average. So that's where your salary every scheme year impacts how your pension's building up. A defined benefit scheme, because it's all written in the rules, that means that you're guaranteed an income, you know how that's going to be calculated and it will be paid for the rest of your life. The components are made up of a salary, service and an accrual rate, and those are written in the rules of the scheme. They also have inflation applied to them, either when in payment or when building up, normally for a career average scheme. And it means that because it's linked to your salary and your service and not your contributions, there's minimal risk to you because you're guaranteed to have it regardless of how much you're paying in. It's not linked to how much you're paying in. It's based on the fact that you're in work earning a salary. And the benefits are payable from a defined age 
So that's the normal pension age for Alpha, your state pension age. But you do have the option of claiming it early, as Liliana said, from age 55. Now, Alpha is a scheme that you're automatically enrolled into. The other scheme that you do have the choice of joining is partnership, and that's a defined contribution scheme. So there'd be no pension that would be payable from the civil service for this because this is investment based and it's generally what you would find is in practice in the private sector. So certainly working in the private sector, the majority of my pension scheme membership is in this kind of scheme. A defined contribution scheme means that the rates that have to be paid by an employer and an individual are written in the rules of the scheme, so they're defined there. The contributions then have to be invested, so you would need to choose where you want that money to be invested. Now, there are default options available, so if anything like me, I didn't really know about what investments were, but Legal in general, who are the partnership provider, have an awful lot of information to help you make that confident choice moving forward. So this builds up a physical pot of money based on how much is paid over. So the rules of the scheme for partnerships say your employer has to pay and those rates are dependent on your age. So the older you are, the more your employer will pay in. But it also says and in, as an individual, you can have zero deduction from your pay. You can choose to pay in if you wish to, and that amount is up to you. And that could mean that your employer would be paying a little bit more in. So that fund can then be spent in different ways. So you can look into taking it all as a lump sum. That would be then on you to make sure that that was last in your retirement. 25% of it would be tax free. The rest would then have tax applied to it. And you again, up to you to make sure it lasts. You could buy a pension, but that would be something called an annuity. So it wouldn't be from the civil service. It would be from an insurance company, so like legal in general, um, standard life. And they would look at the value of your pot and how long that that's going to take to last you your lifetime. And you could also do something else, which is called income drawdown, where you make regular withdrawals. There is tax implications applied to that. And again, the onus would be on you to make sure it lasted your retirement. This can be claimed from age 55 and you will have heard before we define benefit schemes. If you take it earlier, a reduction would be applied for a defined contribution scheme. There's no reduction applied because you're taking it early, so you're going to be losing out on the future investment growth. So it's no better, it's no worse, it's just very different and it's been introduced to help make sure that the offering is there if that suits your attitude to pension saving more. So just to put some information side by side, so defined benefit scheme, you're guaranteed an income. You know how that's going to be calculated because it's written in the rules. It's inflation proofs to ensure it doesn't lose any value. And there's minimal risk for an individual in the scheme because it's not based on investments and how much is paid in. With a defined contribution scheme, it is risk based investment and you can make changes to it based on your understanding, your knowledge, your confidence. But you do have those more flexible access options, but it is all based on how much is in the pot. There are ways in which you can look into increasing your alpha pension. So we're going to look at three options. Two will directly impact your alpha pension and one of them will sit aside of them. So this is where you would say, I'm going to make extra payments from my salary here that's going to have a direct impact on how my pension is building up. So we've got three on the slide there. So I was going to talk about the two that directly impact Alpha, first of all. So we have the middle one here, which is EPA. This is where you're able to make additional contributions from your salary to allow you to access some or all of your Alpha pension early, either without a reduction or less of a reduction. So you could look, for example, into making contributions to allow you to access that part of your alpha pension, for example, two years early. But your contributions that you pay can only be paid on a monthly basis from the 1st of April each year. And those contributions are only going to affect the pension that you're building up in alpha. So if you start it from April 24, then it won't touch the pension you've already built up, just what you're building up from that point. There is a calculator available on the website so you can see if that's worth you doing that. The next option is added pension. So this is literally what it says there. This allows you to buy extra alpha pension that would be paid to you when you come to retire. You have the option of doing this in monthly contributions from the 1st of April. You also have the option of doing a lump sum all available in each scheme year. 
The timescales, the process for this is published on the website around December time. But this is you saying, I want to buy extra pension for myself and potentially your dependents, as that's an option when you come to retire. So that builds up alongside your normal alpha pension. And then the final option is civil service additional voluntary contributions. So this is very similar to partnership, except it's you staying in alpha and building up a separate pot of money, all based purely on what you're paying in. So this is you saying, all right, I want to play around on the market, but I want to stay in alpha as well. So you can choose what you wish to pay, how much you wish to pay, when and when that starts. And that builds up a separate pot of money that's investment based. And you could look again into taking all of that as a lump sum. 25% tax free, the rest is taxable. So we're taking you through an awful lot of information now when it comes to understanding your pension benefits. And a lot of people on my team, you know, and, and I will say they're all younger than me, have all got retirement plans in place. So they're thinking about the, what they want to do. So it's something that you shouldn't be leaving until a later age. Let's start thinking about it now. It doesn't mean that everything has to be set in stone. So it's thinking about what you want to do with your life, your finances and starting to plan for that. So the retirement living standards have been created by the Pension and Lifetime Saving Association. So the figures on the screen are to give you some guidance around what level of income you might want. It's individual for each person, so please don't get caught up in these figures. It's just to give you some thoughts around it. And we would encourage you to be looking at what you're entitled to when you come to retirement because it will all have an impact on this. It may be that you want to spend some time with your family. It may be that you want to go around traveling. I think as soon as my boss Catherine can do, she's off around the world. She's already doing that at the moment. I was speaking to Liliana. She wants to set up a farm with all pigs and all animals. I want to take on cats and dogs and a nice piece of land when I get older. But it's all thinking about that. You might be in a band. You might be wanting to spend a lot of time with your family. So my mum retired um, and she started looking after her nephew my nephew sorry so her grandkids so she spends a lot of her time doing that so start thinking about what it means for you so i'll just close this down with some actions for you to do so visit the website you don't need to register for the website it's generic you can sign in but there's an awful lot of information on there to help you understand your scheme benefits if you haven't already then register for the portal Get on one of our pension power sessions. They're extremely well attended and we get amazing feedback and it's all to get you understanding more about your pension benefits. We have a podcast. So series one is available on the website and series two is being issued weekly. It's conversations with real people and we're getting some amazing feedback from them. So it's worth a listen, have them going on in the background and start looking at your retirement plan. As I say, it doesn't need to be set in stone. It's just getting you to think about what you want out of your retirement and therefore thinking about the money. OK, so that's it from me. I'm going to pass back to Catherine. Thanks very much for listening to me so far. Thanks, Michelle. That was great. Uh, really interesting information and really important, I think, to highlight that point about planning for retirement. It's never too early to start thinking about it. You know, even if it's just a pipe dream at the moment of what you'd ideally like to do, just see what steps you can make to make as much of that as you possibly can in reality. So something to think about. OK, so we've had lots of lots of questions come in. Thank you very much. We're going to answer as many of them as we possibly can. Unfortunately, we won't be able to get through all of them as the volume is just crazy on today's session. Um, remember, pension power sessions are always available. You will get all of your questions answered on one of those sessions. So do um, think about attending one of those if you haven't already. So let's have a look at the questions that have come in and we're going to focus on those that have been most upvoted. Um, so the first one is quite of a long one. I'm just going to shorten it a little bit um, and I think it probably highlights that there's lots of myths and rumours out there about pensions that tend to circulate around different departments and different offices. They're not always necessarily true. So let's have a look at this one first and foremost. I've heard if you partially retire and don't take your alpha pension that the amount that you have already built up in alpha then gets reduced when you eventually receive it because it is then based on your reduced earnings for partial retirement. Is this correct? I'll leave it there. The question is a little bit longer, but I think Liliana, if I can just give that to you and if you can just answer that question for us, that would be great. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Very good question and one I actually have heard a couple times before. Um, so Michelle did mention once you've built up pension in alpha, you've got that, that you've banked that. So um, when it comes to being partially retired, any pension that you get thereafter will be based on your reduced earnings because to partially retire, you have to drop your earnings by at least 20%. So any pension going forward would be built up at a lower rate because it's based on your earnings for each year. So again, any pension you've built up before partial retirement is still there. It's not reduced. Um, again, any pension you get thereafter would be uh, based on your earnings. And of course, if you've dropped your earnings, that means your pension will build up at um, a slightly lower rate. Um, and then when you come to retire, it's up to you if you want to take everything at that point um, because people do partially retire early. So again, you can partially retire from 55. So in that case, if you do take your alpha before state pension age, it's reduced. But going you know, into partial retirement doesn't reduce any pension that you've built up so far. That pension is yours. Any going forward would be based on your earnings for each individual year of service. So I hope that helps and I'll pass it back to Catherine. Thanks Lil, that's great. So yeah, some myths and rumours going around there that your partial pension reduces when you come to claim it later, which definitely is not the case. Um, and the follow up question, I'll just quickly answer myself here, which kind of follows on from that is, can you take your classic pension but not touch the alpha element until you reach the alpha pension age? So on partial retirement, absolutely. Yes, you could access any benefits from classic or classic plus premium or Nuvos, um, but not take your alpha benefits at the same time if you didn't want to. But the important factor is you do have to take a form of retirement to be able to do that. So like partial retirement, you can't access your pension without taking a form of retirement. So that just follows on there from that question we've just answered. So for our next most, most sorry, most upvoted question, I'll come to Michelle um, and a question from Andy. When will the retirement modeler get updated to reflect the McLeod judgment or the 2015 remedy, as we call it in the scheme? Michelle, could you give us an answer for that one, please? Thanks, Andy. Yep. So if you bear in mind that it's all coming into effect on the 1st of October and your annual statements from next year will be updated to include the McLeod option side by side. Remember, you won't be able to make a choice until you come to actually retire. So the model is pulling through from your statement so that itself will pull that data through. But there is a McLeod calculator available through the portal now so if you sign in it's one of the tiles and that at the moment's given ballpark figures but that's being worked on to be updated in a lot more detail over the next few weeks so then you'll start to see the information side by side but just again to confirm you won't be asked to make a choice until you actually come to retire that'd be the best position for you to be in to know how you've been affected by it. Thanks, Michelle. That's great. So, yeah, the retirement benefits illustrate there is the short term modeler that's available until the full uh, retirement modeler is updated with all of the 2015 remedy on the cloud judgment. And do remember our sessions on Thursday and Friday this week talk more about the 2015 remedy as well. So hopefully you're signed up to attend some of those. Um, if you are someone who's impacted by the 2015 remedy, if you're not sure, don't forget the Am I Affected tool is available on the Civil Service Pension Scheme website as well. You can answer a few simple questions and that will let you know whether that's something you need to be concerned about, whether you're impacted or not. OK, so let's go back to our next question. I'll come to Liliana with the next one. We've got a question from a member who says, I am 55. I would like to retire at 60. Is it worth buying additional pension or is it too late to see any real benefit from it? Thoughts on that, please, Liliana? Very good question and thank you for submitting that. Um, it's never too early or too late to get engaged with your pension. That's the short answer. Now, of course, if you're looking to buy additional pension, added pension comes at a cost and that cost is based on your age. So obviously the, the you know sooner you're going to be retiring, the price does go up that, that little bit because the benefits are anticipated to be paid sooner. So the actual answer to your question has to lie within yourself because is it worth you purchasing the added pension? That's something that you would have to decide for you and your financial circumstances. But what I will say is that you can price up added pension. You can put in the calculator how much you're looking to purchase and it will tell you how much that will cost you. So of course, once you've got those figures, you can make an informed decision, but absolutely it's never too late or too early to, to you know, buy added pension, plan your retirement. Um, and of course, if you do buy added pension, you would absolutely see the benefit at retirement because you would literally purchase that additional alpha income. 
and that would be added to your retirement pension that you've accrued so far. So you would absolutely see the benefit. Uh, whether or not it's something you want to do, of course, it's entirely um, you know, up to yourself. But again, that added pension calculator can be found on the Civil Service Pension website um, under member calculators. So again, you can just go on the website, pull up that calculator, price it up, see if it's something you want to do and get your application in. So um, the exercise is done once a year, as it's been mentioned. Um, so you've got plenty of time to do that planning. And if you do want to buy added pension again, the earlier you do it, the, the less money it costs. So absolutely feel free to get on the website, price it up and make that decision. Back to you, Catherine. Thank you, Lil. Yeah, lots of people always asking about added pension and whether it's worthwhile or not. So it's definitely worth using that calculator available on the scheme website just to consider it for yourself and your position. Don't forget that the contributions you make towards added pension do attract tax relief. So you will get tax relief on any contributions that you make and any added pension that you buy also gets adjusted annually in line with inflation, both whilst you're in service and while your pension's in payment as well. So there's lots of important factors that do make it a very attractive option to consider. OK, so in our questions, we have answered um, the next most upvoted questions. Quite a few of them, I think. Um, is it correct that if I claim my classic at 60, my alpha at 67, I have to partially retire and reduce my hours? So we've confirmed that, yes, you do have to take a form of retirement when you want to access your pension benefits. And um, we've also advised you when the McLeod Judgment or 2015 Remedy Calculator will be available. Um, and also, should I choose to retire early? Can I choose not to take the alpha pension and just take the classic? We've confirmed that yes, that is the case. You don't have to take both sets of pension benefits at the same time. The next question, Michelle, we will answer. Um, I wish to retire at 58. I am currently uh, have classic and alpha pension benefits. Will I be able to take both of those at the age of 58 and maybe give us some information on the impact taking the benefits at that age would have as well? Great question. And I'm sure as we can see from the thumbs up, there's an awful lot of people thinking the same thing. So you can access your classic pension from age 55, that at uh, 50, sorry, that would class as early retirement and you can access your alpha from 55. So age 58, absolutely, you can take all of them. Remember for your classic, because the normal pension age is 60, so it would be reduced for you taking it two years early. So that would be between approximately four and five percent for each year early that you take it. That would then have an impact on the lump sum. Yes, you can take your alpha. As I said, you can take that from 55. Remember, the normal pension age for alpha is your state pension age. So that would be reduced for you taking it early. So that's approximately 4% for each year early that you take it. And again, that would affect the lump sum that you would be taking as that would be based off the reduced pension. So yes, you can. If you're thinking about carrying on working, then you would need to think about partial retirement if that was in the civil service. And remember that your pension is classed as taxable income. Now, if you go onto the modeler accessible through the portal, and if you move the scale to 58, your latest statement will show your classic and your alpha. So you'll then be able to see the effect of early retirement, which is what we would call it. And then underneath the figures that it's given you, it would say this is how much it is for classic. This is how much it is for alpha. So you could decide then if it's worth taking them both at the same time and what those figures are. And that should help you with your decision. Thanks, Michelle. That was great. Um, OK, so let's get back to our questions with this one. They've titled it as a morbid question. What happens if you and the person nominated to receive the death benefit lump sum both die in the same event, like a car accident? Is there any way of nominating a second person to cover this eventuality? Liliana, could you give us some guidance around that? Yes, very good question and um, yeah, very, very insightful. Um, what I can say is if your death benefit nomination also has passed away, um, it would go to your estate. So it's not lost. It would go to your estate. Um, and yeah, that that would be where it goes. Um, if you have another nominee, obviously they, they could potentially pay that out to the other nominee still. Um, but again, really good to kind of get get your nominations. Make sure they're up to date. Obviously, if anything happens, let us know. But in those instances, yeah, if, if the nominee happens to pass away at the same time, then it would go to your estate. So yes, very tough question, but very good question. And it's really good that you're engaged. So hopefully that helps and I'll hand it back to Catherine. Thank you, Lil. Yeah, it's a it's a tough one. It's an obviously hope something we hope will never happen, but 
you know, sometimes it is best to think about the worst case scenario and consider what might happen. So uh, covering all eventualities. OK, so next question we have um, from Sean. When I take the classic part of my pension, is my final salary based on the average salary for the last or best year of the actual salary at time of retiring? Um, I.e. should I wait till I've had a full year of a pay rise to take the full benefit? Michelle, could you give us some info on that for Sean, please? Thank you, Sean, for that question. It's something that we get asked a lot on our pension power sessions on our pre-retirement sessions. So when it comes to calculating your classic benefits and the salary that we would use would always be the salary when you come to leave or retire. So it would never be the salary when you moved over to Alpha as you didn't make that choice. And what we'll actually do is we'll look back over the last three years and we're looking for a consecutive 12 month period where your full time equivalent salary was the highest. So we wouldn't take your annual salary figure. We'd be looking at what's exactly been earned in that. So if you were to say get a salary change on the 1st of October in order for us to use that full years, then you would need to have been earning it for a full year by the time you come to retire. If you got it in October and lots of retiring in December, you would have only been receiving that for two months. So it'd be two months of that. Essentially, we'd be looking at and 10 months previous. But remember, we will be looking over the last three years to see if there's a consecutive 12 month period where your salary was the highest full time equivalent. And we we'll use that in our calculation. Hopefully that's cleared that up. There's lots of things to take into account when you are planning for your retirement date. But hopefully that's given you some clarity on that. But thanks for your question, Sean. Thanks, Michelle. OK, so we'll continue on and try and get through a few more questions before we wrap things up for the end of the session. Um, another question about death benefits for you, Liliana, from Angie. I have nominated for death benefit for my classic pension. Will that automatically apply to my alpha or do I have to complete another nomination form? So what's the situation there, please, Lil? Yeah, very good question. Um, the death benefit nomination form is for the death benefit. So if you nominated someone while you were in classic, that would technically still stand. Um, you can look on your benefit statement. So everybody, if you do have a death benefit nomination, that will be listed on your benefit statement. So if we don't have one, then obviously you want to get us a new form in. Um, so yeah, you can check your benefit statement. Of course, that's on the pension portal as we speak. Um, and obviously, if, if that's the person you want you know, to have that death benefit, happy days if you want to change it please do let us know um but just to note members of classic you used to be able to only nominate one person uh, but now that everybody's in alpha or most people i should say are in alpha you've moved into alpha you are now able to have multiple nominations so if you did have one person uh, but now want multiple you can again um you know let us know of your um wishes and again we would pay that death benefit to multiple nominees if you now wish so Short answer is yes, it should still stand. Check your benefit statement, make sure it's on there. If there's nothing on there, then again, get us a form or if anything changes, let us know as well. So I hope that helps and I'll hand it back to you, Catherine. Thanks, Lil. That's great. Um, next question I'll come to you with, Michelle. Is there an easy rule of thumb for alpha pension reductions if you leave earlier than state pension age? I know it is 5% per year for the classic scheme, for instance. So what's the situation with alpha, please, Michelle? Thank you, and I'm quite sure a lot of people are thinking about the same because state pension age seems that little bit too far away, but you never know, you might want to carry on. But yes, you can, as I said before, take your pension early from Alpha. So the reduction is approximately 4% for each year early that you take it. So with state pension age back, and remember that affects your lump sum option, but you do have the option of course going on the modeler and seeing how that does actually affect your figures and the McLeod calculator will give you your McLeod options as well. So yeah, that a reduction there, but because Alpha can build up so quickly for an awful lot of people, even with the reduction applied to it, it might not be as bad as you would think it would be. So it's worth looking at the modeler options there and seeing what figures you're actually making your decision based on. But hopefully that's helped and that tool in the modeler there is really useful for you to use so you can make some planning there um, for your options. Thanks, Michelle. That's great. We're fast running out of time, um, so I'm going to just skip to a question that I think Liliana can answer for us nice and quickly. Um, so I'm just looking at the most upvoted questions. So I'm going to ask if you partially retire, do you still get the death in service benefit? So Liliana, could you give us a, a quick explanation of how death in service once someone's taken partial retirement works, please? 
Yeah, very good question. Uh, if you do partially retire, you're known as an active pensioner. So if you were to pass away in service, there would still be a lump sum paid to whoever you've nominated. Now, partially retiring does impact on the potential lump sum that would be payable. Um, there are two different calculations we do and it's the best of the two. So it's either your death benefit lump sum for active service or the lump sum guarantee. So just to keep it as simple as possible, we take into account any pension and lump sum you've already had for partial retirement when calculating any lump sum due. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps and we'll hand it back to Catherine. Thanks everyone for your questions. Thanks Lil and thanks to you both you and Michelle for your time in the session today. Hopefully that was helpful for everybody. That is all we've got time for on today's session. I hope that it was useful to you. Um, don't forget that the dedicated Pension Awareness Month pages of the Scheme website have got lots more information and today's session and all of the other sessions we're delivering throughout the month will be recorded and on there for you to watch. There's also a feedback survey. We would really appreciate it if you could take a couple of minutes to leave us some feedback on our events. We do use your feedback to shape the sessions that we provide for you in the future. So please tell us what we've done well and what we've done not so well. And if you've still got outstanding questions, don't forget that the pension power sessions can be booked via the civil service pension scheme website and we run those every single weekday so there's still opportunities to learn more and have those questions answered at some point in the future so we'll finish things there for today thank you very much everybody again for joining us and have a great rest of the day bye for now